In the world of duty rifles, Daniel Defense has never been at the top of our list. Will this one rifle change our opinion forever? God bless him. I don't know if it's me or this rifle. The Daniel Defense R3 may be the Daniel Defense rifle that changes my transgressions towards the company and the rifles they've produced for a very long time. Without a fraction of a doubt, Daniel Defense has produced flat out awesome rifles. They're definitely built for hard use, duty use, law enforcement, and military, no doubt about any of that stuff. However, in the past, I've had some qualms against them for whether it be politics or what they put on a very expensive rifle. With all that being said though, you guys, if you wanna support the channel, you wanna be part of the channel, you wanna really help us out, hit that subscribe button, share this video with your friends, share it with coworkers, like it, just get it out there because it helps push the algorithms, helps the 2A community, and more importantly, helps everybody else see our channel. With this particular model, Daniel Defense R3, this actually has the RIS-2 rail system and a quad rail on it. Now this itself, the one you see here, is a special edition. You'll notice that this is like a rattle can Cerakote job on here. It looks fantastic. It's probably one of the coolest looking Daniel Defense rifles I've ever seen. And on top of that, probably one of the best looking rifles on the shelf. And in fact, when we went into a local dealer this past week and scooped this up and bought it with our own money to test it to show you guys, the reason we picked this was because of A, how it looked, the features it had, and the knockout deal that we got on it. So, all the features on this with the R3, which really sets this apart from the rest of the Daniel Defense series of rifles, and I think that actually helps Daniel Defense fetch their, let's say, plus $2,000 price tag, is the fact that this is a completely and fully ambi rifle, meaning it has an ambi bolt lock and ambi bolt release. Now, it's very easy to hit, in fact, I love the fact that the paddle on the right-hand side of the gun is actually serrated. A lot of times those paddles like this, and in particular with the LWRC rifles, they're not serrated. I had one of those rifles. It worked fine, it worked well. However, that button itself wasn't serrated. So when I came up to get it, it almost wasn't like I could feel it indexing against the proper spot. And it's simple to get on this one because it has a nice serration. Now, with that being said, they didn't forget about the left side of the gun for us right-handed shooters. Now there are wrong-handed shooters out there. And for the wrong-handed shooter, you have a left-hand side magazine release as well. That paddle on the left side of the gun is enlarged and it's very large, it's a good texture. In fact, I probably prefer it to what Geisley has with the Maritime Catch, so I definitely like it a lot on this rifle. Now, the safety selector switch on here, probably one of its weaker points. And in fact, I don't know why you would have such an expensive rifle with such an afterthought when it comes to the safeties, because the safety selector on here is a full length, 90 degree safety selector that you cannot change to 45, 50, or 70 degrees. Most companies went with radiant stuff. I can understand not using other manufacturer stuff, but I think Daniel Defense is fully capable of developing a safety selector switch that is way better than a mil spec with a extra long right-handed side safety on there. So every time I actually flick that safety off, it comes down and hits the knuckle on my index or trigger finger. Regardless of how I feel about the ambi safety selector on here and the fact that it's long on both sides and it's not any shorter on the right-handed side for a right-handed shooter, there are lefties out there who will appreciate the fact that it's a full length safety selector. So if you're going for a completely ambidextrous rifle, which applies to all shooters out there, that will apply to all shooters far better than a shortened one for that left-handed shooter. More ambi features on here, the charging handle. The charging handle on here is the end of the fences, grip and rip charging handle. It does have some of a gas buster lip on there to actually protect yourself from gas blowback when you're running a suppressor. Now the grip and rip on here, it feels good. I think it's a good overall length, it's honed, it doesn't have any sharp edges, and it has just enough aggressive texture for getting a good grip on here. All those features on there are good. Good forward assist on there. That's something I expect on a hard use duty rifle. I think it's a 100% necessity regardless of what people think and the fact that you go up there and hit that indent on the bolt carrier group. Bolt carrier group on here is going to be an N16 spec full auto profile bolt carrier group that is well made. Daniel Defense is well known for making very, very good bolt carrier groups. Uh, I've used them in builds before. I think they're great. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. If you want a good quality bolt carrier group that will stand up to hard use, Daniel Defense can definitely fit that bill for you. Now the magwell on here is slightly beveled or almost enlarged. I won't say it's any much larger than most mil spec, but it is a little bit on the larger side. Again, not huge, but a little bit bigger. The furniture on this rifle. I am not a fan of Daniel Defense's furniture. I know a lot of people happen to really like it. I think it's quality. Um, 
Everything on this rifle is made in USA and manufactured by Daniel Defense. I think that it's okay. I think it's usable, I think it's serviceable. I do not think you have to go out and change the furniture right away if you get this rifle. For me, I will 100% change this furniture right away after I'm done shooting this review. Um, why? Well, on the handle or the grip here itself, when I actually come onto the rifle and I get a nice high purchase on the grip, the bump that they actually have in here in this finger groove actually falls in the middle of like my, my middle finger, okay? And actually just underneath there, and I don't like where it sits for me personally. For some folks, it could be fine. However, getting a very high purchase on the rifle to get that safety selector and ultimately try and produce better recoil control and getting that high grip with an AR as well, I don't like where that sits for me personally. Like I said, I think it could be fun for some folks. However, for me personally, this grip would have to go. I also don't care for rubberized textures on the grips. I prefer something just like a B5. In fact, B5 or the BCM Gunfighter grip for me is a go-to grip. Now, the rear stock on here, there's no wobble or wiggle in it whatsoever. Uh, it's actually, it's really nice. Uh, the fact that there is no wobble in here and it's really stiff is nice. Uh, it, overall, the locking mechanism on here in the six position buffer tube works fine. It's easy to do and really, it does actuate with gross motor skills. So you grip the whole thing, grip it all the way and close it open and close. So it's easy to do. I don't have any issues. And I like the fact that if anything, it's a little bit on the stiff side, so it doesn't wobble whatsoever. And that also tells me that this rifle and the parts on it are in specs. Some rifles you pick up that buffer tube may be just out of spec. However, this one clearly is not because of how well it's fit. Castle nut back there is staked like it's supposed to be. QD socket here on the rear of the rifle, as well as one back here on the butt stock. And then moving forward on the rifle, what I haven't yet covered in this rifle, which really made me like it, as opposed to every other Daniel Defense rifle, and ultimately the reason why it came home with us, is because it has a Geisley trigger in it. It comes with a Geisley SSA trigger in it. That's a two-stage trigger with about a two and a half pound take up and a two pound break. It's crisp and clean, it's a fantastic trigger, and it is far better than the crappy mil spec triggers that Daniel Defense generally puts in all of their ARs, regardless of the price. Going through the rest of this rifle, one thing I wanna note is that the bolt carrier function on here and going into the buffer tube, which has an H1 buffer on here, is very smooth. Now, what that means, ultimately, to me, is it tells me that the interior of the buffer tube was machined well, and it was honed, and the bolt carrier group was machined well, and it was honed meaning you're not getting that zipper sound. Now, if you're familiar with PSA rifles, even the Sabre line, which is touted as their top of the line, you know, let's say premium, but without the premium price tag, they sound like a zipper when you run the bolt carrier group. This doesn't sound like that, and that's good. I don't think that, you know, by all means it shouldn't, but this doesn't, and it feels a really, really smooth function. Going up here on the rail system. Now, this rifle in particular actually has the Riz 2 rail. Now we actually liked it because it's a little bit different and for some reason it felt almost nostalgic in the fact that it's a quad rail. I can't sit here and tell you that this thing's super heavy because this is a 14 and a half inch pinned and welded rifle. So therefore you're not getting that big long 16 inch barrel and then an additional muzzle device in the front and all that extra weight. You're cutting off a good amount of weight and making it a more handy user friendly rifle for let's say close quarters environments, you know, VCQB, whatever it might be, it's a little bit easier to use. But overall, the, the build quality that Daniel Defense has with their rail systems is fantastic. They're well known for making very quality rails, and I don't really think you're gonna find anybody to say anything bad about their rails. It does come apart in order for them. It's mounted an M203 grenade launcher on here. Will I be doing that? Of course not, but you obviously can. They've built these rifles and these rails to take that level of abuse. So without a fraction of doubt, Daniel Defense is building hard use rifles. The barrel in here, it's another one of those things. Daniel Fence is well known for making very good barrels. This is a cold hammer forged chrome lined 14 and a half inch barrel. Now I won't say run of the mill because they're well known for making good barrels and having good barrels on their rifles. So obviously that stuff is very good. It has a pin gas block on here with a mid-length gas system. So this rifle is gonna shoot well. Uh, I don't think it's gonna have any issues like being over gas. However, Daniel Defense rifles, generally speaking, are a little bit on the over gas side. Uh, they do that so that they'll function more flawlessly under dirty or austere conditions. For a duty rifle, I think that's okay. Competition rifle, if you want something to shoot flat, it's not probably the best, but for a hard use rifle that functions 100% of the time, that's a good thing. Getting up here on the muzzle device. This is another thing that set this rifle in particular, this particular special edition a little bit different than the rest of the R3 models or the DDM4 V7s or whatever it might be from Daniel Defense. This actually has a key mount muzzle device. The key mount muzzle device is nice because if you want to take any of the popular suppressors that use that system and that attachment, you can easily attach it. Normally, these R3s come pinned and welded with a, uh, an A2 birdcage. 
Well, as we all know, you generally speaking cannot mount a suppressor on an A2 birdcage. There is a new, let's say, device out there that's been developed where some guys are able to do that now. However, it's not common and you won't be able to add that onto every suppressor you use. So it's good to see that they have this on here so that you can actually mount whatever you might want. One thing on there that I don't like, um, the best way I can tell you is that I'm not sure if somebody forgot to wear glasses or what that day, but when they pinned and welded the flash hider on here, um, they probably should go back to welding school. It's not very good. Uh, on this quality of a rifle with the fit and finish, which is frankly flawless of the rest of the rifle, even the finish, I don't really know why that weld on there just looks so jagged. And honestly, it just looks mushy. I've seen a lot of good pinned and welds. I've done it myself. I've seen friends do it and things like that. It's not hard to do and it's not hard to make it look good. And this one, you know, is it a huge eyesore? No, I just think it could be done better. Overall though, the build call on this rifle is absolutely fantastic. And I guess we're gonna find out if this rifle, at the end of the day, on top of all the stuff that have changed my mind so far, and compared to what I normally thought about Daniel Defense Rifles, I wanna see how this thing is gonna perform on the range, because at the end of the day, this thing can look cool, it can function great inside the studio here, but if it don't run for crap on the range, it ain't worth nothing to me. One of the best overall ways that I've found to evaluate rifles when I'm trying to, trying to see how they shoot is to run a build drill. Now build drill, if you're not familiar, is seven yards, 21 feet, it's six rounds. Uh, I try to generally get all A zone to B zone hits. Um, usually it's not very hard with most ARs at this distance. It's fairly easy, but what it allows me to do is how easy it can be with a certain rifle. This rifle, I don't think we're having any problems with that. So 157, all A zone. 136, all A zone. I am, uh, I'll be damned. Color me impressed. Generally speaking, I've picked up Daniel Defense Rifles, thought they were overgassed and frankly shoot like crap. This thing. Generally speaking, when I picked up Daniel Defense Rifles, I didn't like them because of the trigger. This rifle, getting this special model with the SSA trigger from Geisley, is really a game changer. Uh, I hate mil-spec triggers. I think they hinder shooters. Um, I don't think they're necessary on duty rifles. And in fact, that's been proven time and time again over the course of history. Uh, I just think that overall, you need a good trigger in here. And this, this particular model, having it in there is a game changer. Overall though, the rifle shoots flat and we're talking it doesn't have a comp or anything like that it is just a full-blown flash hider on this particular model so it's shooting good uh, gas wise ejection wise it seems pretty good which we'll take a look at that here in a second yeah so ejection patterns are all looking about the 3 330 range um, that stuff looks good i really can't complain about that whatsoever that's what you would expect out of a good, well-gassed rifle. This one, I can't even say that this thing is like over-gassed just based off how that ejection pattern is. It's it's pretty good, it's it's running good. Um, man, this sucker is uh, making me eat crow. Full ambi features on a rifle for me are not something I have to have. There's something that is a nice amenity to have on a rifle. Now in particular, this rifle here is empty. Uh, but to just get like bolt lock, that's probably where I really find the ambi bolt release and bolt catch to really come into play. So for me as a right hand shooter, I'm able to push that down, lock that back like that. Super simple. I'm not having to do a bunch of herky jerky stuff with my opposite hand. It's just very easy to do. In addition to it, like I said, you can get started then with the rifle. Now, when I'm running different rifles, I like to test a bunch of different magazines while I do that. So I have some KCI USA mags they sent out to us to try. They've been good so far. Um, I use Lancer mags. P mags and then the Daniel Defense ones with this so far. And so far, everything has been good. Some rifles I've run into, they don't like the Lancer mags. I really don't know why, because the Lancer mags are super nice. I love the fit and finish of them and they function good usually, but I've had a few rifles where they just do not function in them. Uh, this rifle so far, uh, we're gonna find out because this is the first bit of Lancer mags. But we got some steel here at 25 yards.
the grip wise, I, I just don't care for the Daniel Defense grip on here. That's personal preference. That can't be for everybody. For me though, I don't like the, I don't like that nub in there. I just don't like it. I don't like the grippy like rubberized texture. I would much prefer like a stipple job that you get on the B5 or the BCM. But again, that's personal preference. That's not necessarily a knock against Daniel Defense. However, I don't like their furniture. What I want to cover now is the benefit of that Ambi bolt lock on there. Now having a bolt release is nice on ARs, but if I'm going to have one or the other, I want both. The reason I want both is because when you're doing, let's say malfunctions clearance, because ARs will malfunction at some point in time. Generally speaking, it's going to be a magazine related issue and not so much the AR, especially if it's well built like this Daniel Defense. But what I want to do is run through a few malfunctions clearances by Andrew here actually inducing it on purpose. So make mention right now, the rifle's not malfunctioning. We're making it malfunction. And you'll get to see how you actually operate that ambi bolt release. So got the bolt, actually got like a double feed here. So you can lock it back like that, strip your magazine, reinsert magazine and fire. So let's another double feed. So you can strip, lock it back. It's clear, reinsert your magazine, come back forward. And that's what, it just makes it really easy. So now the alternative to that, come on over here. The alternative to that is if you don't have this, Andrew will induce it again. So dead trigger, I can see it's, it's blocked there. Release my magazine. Now I have to come back here. I have to grip it with my opposite hand, rip it back, lock it, reinsert the magazine, come back forward and then you can do it. So you can see it's significantly easier than having to do that. So you'll notice too, obviously I'm ripping that magazine out, clearing the rifle and then reinserting, but that ambi bolt release like that is really where it shines. And my professional opinion is the fact that you can use it for malfunctions clearance. Cause like I said, they're gonna happen. Generally speaking, malfunctions like that, double feed in particular, or stuck casing or something like that, they can be because of ammo or magazine and not so much the gun. Two things I want to cover right now is going to be the trigger on this one being the Geisley SSA and also the Ambi mil-spec safety. Starting off with the Ambi mil-spec safety is it's 90 degrees all the way down. Now on my support, let's say on the trigger finger of my hand, when I flick that down, I can feel it come underneath my trigger finger ultimately and sweep against my underside of my knuckles, which I don't care for and don't like. It's one of the things for me personally, 100% chance that I will change out the safety on this rifle. But the trigger, there is no need to change this trigger. The Geisley SSA trigger, there is nothing bad to say about these. This is gonna be your take up. Take up about two and a half pounds, a wall and a crisp break, short reset. You guys, if you're interested in our loadout for all of our videos, what you're gonna see in the future is look down in the description. There's gonna be a link to our website where I cover every single aspect of what we may have, whether it's optics, the eye pro I'm wearing, the ear pro I'm wearing, the jacket I'm wearing, the pants I'm wearing, whatever it might be, will be in that loadout. Click the link in the description to get to that loadout and see what we're using. A great way to track recoil impulse and how the gun, let's say, functions under recoil, because some ARs do shoot softer than others. Um, I can tell you right now, this is not the softest shooting. It doesn't have a muzzle brake, fine with that. I don't like muzzle brakes for law enforcement use in particular or duty because they're concussive, loud, and annoying around other shooters. And on top of that, they're gonna blow your eardrums indoors. Uh, suppressors are obviously great, but we don't have one on this today. However, so far gassing-wise, it seems good. But let's run through that recoil impulse here on the target. I'm gonna do it basically in three round bursts. We have about 15 rounds loaded up here, and then we'll run through some slow-mo for you guys as well. I'm um, not just gonna blow through this, uh, but you'll really be able to see how that recoil is. Now for myself personally, when I shoot an AR, I'm loading that front quad, planting my rear foot, leaning forward on the gun a little bit, and still maintaining a good upright posture. Running through there, um, double taps, three round bursts there to start. Uh, it's really not any issue for me to make good A zone hits while double tapping the rifle. And I'm not really even, again, with that upright posture,
I don't have to bear down on the rifle whatsoever. I probably gotta adjust my EOTech a touch because it's shooting a little left. I'm gonna pop this off something else. But overall, the rifle, it shoots good. It's very easy to get those double taps. You guys, that's it. Uh, final thoughts? Would I buy it again? Yeah, yeah, I would, 100%. Would I recommend this to somebody else? Yes, I would, 100%. I think it's a fantastic rifle. I think the R3 rifles in general from Daniel Defense are the only Daniel Defense rifle you should spend your money on. Um, and I say that because I think the ambi controls on here are really good. And I think that it's worth the price tag that this thing fetches. Uh, we picked it up with a good deal, but overall, I think it's a fantastic rifle. Even if it was to have the mil spec trigger, I think it's still worth the price tag that this fetches. I think it's a really well-made rifle. Um, it's functioning 100% flawlessly today through about 350 rounds. Cold weather, I uh, threw a little bit of lube on here that I had, um, and it's just, it's shooting really well. You know, overall, gassing-wise, it's a touch on the heavier side for gas per se, but overall it's getting a good 3 to 330 ejection, which is what you want. Um, it's going to be a little bit on the slightly over gas side, of course, once you add a suppressor, but that's okay because I think it's still going to run good. Uh, I think it's a very reliable rifle. I think it's built to be a reliable rifle, and it's coming from a reputable manufacturer at Daniel Defense. Most importantly, guys, if you like this rifle, you like the input that we gave you today, I need you to subscribe to the channel so this pushes this video, pushes our channel to other people who haven't seen it. In the future, I promise you, if you subscribe and you drive our subscriber count up and we can really get into it, we are going to do a full comprehensive review in comparison between this rifle, a Sons of Liberty Gunworks M489, a BCM 14 and a half inch pinned and welded model, a Geisley Super Duty Mod 1 pinned and welded model, and possibly even something else if we can find it, we think it fits the bill to get that ultimate duty rifle comparison. But until next time guys, maybe I was wrong about Daniel Defense, or maybe it's just this rifle.